Hey, welcome to our YouTube channel. I'm super excited for this video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a full automation, sending out all the holiday emails for the whole year so that you can keep engaged with your email list. And the cool thing about this is the way I'm going to set it up and the way I'm going to show you is if somebody comes in at any time in the year, it's going to skip all the previous emails and it's going to place them at the correct moment in this sequence. And then they're going to start getting the emails from that point forward. So they're not going to be kicked back to the beginning of the year. For example, if somebody comes in at the end of June, the next email they're going to get is a happy 4th of July, happy Independence Day. They're not going to get anything from before Independence Day because that's when they're entering your email list. It's really an amazing way for you to take maybe an hour's worth of time to create a year's worth of content so you can send out your emails for those different holidays. Maybe you slip in a little promotion in there, but it really allows you to keep front in mind of your customer. And you could easily tweak this to just create different kind of sequences. We've got another version of this where we have 24 emails going out. So we send an email out on the 1st and the 15th. And again, whenever somebody comes in that sequence, they start getting emails from that point forward because maybe we have some spring promotions or something. We don't want people to get an email in the fall talking about spring promotions. So these are very timely and it's really a great way to just create your content in advance. Once it's done, you don't have to worry about it. You're just gonna have these emails going out on autopilot for a year. So that's enough of that. Let's just jump straight into it and I'll show you exactly how to build this out and we'll talk a little bit more about the details so you can understand a little better. Before we jump into it, make sure to click that subscribe button, like this video and leave your question or comment down below and I will see you on the other side. In this video, we're going to make an automation that's going to send an email to our contacts for every holiday in 2024. So the first thing I did was I went into ChatGPT and I asked it to give me a list of all of the holidays for the United States in 2024. And it gave me 11 holidays starting with New Year's Day, ending on Christmas Day. And additionally, we're going to use January 1st as our reference date. So I asked it to give me a list of how many months and days for each one after January 4th. So for example, President's Day is on February 19th. So that's going to be one month and 19 days after January 1st. And you'll see why that's relevant here in a few minutes. And I just asked it to give it to me in table format so it's easy to reference as I'm building this out. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into our automations. We're going to create a workflow and we're going to start from scratch. I'm going to give it a title and I'm going to call this nurturing automations, lead nurturing 2024 US holidays. I'm going to save that. So initially you would want to add a trigger. I'm not going to add a trigger for this because we're going to be distributing this to other people in our membership. And so different people will have different ways of getting people into this automation. But commonly what you would have when somebody becomes a contact. So if a contact is created or if a form is filled out, that would start this automation. And a couple other things you can add, which I'll probably add a little later, but for the purpose of this video, I'm not going to add, is you may want to have a tag, something like an active tag. And so if somebody is in a funnel where they're receiving automations for a promotion or something, you might want to have an active tag on that. And then you might have a conditional check here to see if that active tag exists. If it exists, then you don't want to send them these. If it doesn't exist, you may want to send them these for holidays it's probably okay but if you're running a campaign you may not want to send them additional emails so that's really up to you but in this case this is strictly going to be setting it up for the holidays and then you can build it use this as a foundation to add and remove whatever you want so the first thing we need to do is we're going to look for event and we're going to set event start date so we're going to just say set start time to january 1st 2024 and then for the type, it's going to be a specific date and time. And then we'll make that January 1st, 2024. And I'm going to make that 8 a.m. And then we'll save that. So let me come in here and add that as well. January 24 at 8 a.m. So what this does is this sets the reference point for this automation. So everything is going to be referencing this event start date, which is January 1st, 2024. So the next thing we want to do is we're going to add a wait step. So we're going to say wait. And then 
instead of time delay, we're going to change that to event appointment time. That's waiting before or after an event start time or an appointment time. And so we want it to start after January 1st. And so our first holiday is going to be New Year's Day. So we're going to just make this one hour. So maybe 9 a.m. on January 1st, we're going to send this out. So we're going to wait one hour. Well, uh, let's actually say New Year's Day. January 1st, 2024, and then in parentheses, I'm just going to say plus one hour, just to give me a reference so that I'll be able to see that. So what we're going to say is after our start date of January 1st, 8 a.m., we're going to wait one hour. So this is going to go out January 1st at 9 a.m. And then we're going to leave this here where it says skip all outbound communication actions and then till the next wait or event start date. So what that means is if somebody comes in after January 1st, they're not going to be sent this action here. It's going to go to the next wait step. So we don't want somebody coming in in June and then receiving emails for New Year's Day which happened several months ago. So this is going to prevent that from happening. It's going to look at the date and it's going to keep moving until it gets to the wait step, which is appropriate to when somebody joined this list. So we'll save that. And then we're going to set up an email here. So we're going to send an email. This could be an SMS, whatever you want to do at that time. In our case, it's going to be an email. So we're going to say email one. This is going to be New Year's Day. And we'll just leave it at that. So I'll just copy this here and I'll put this in the subject line. Of course, for your subject line, you'd want to put something more like Happy New Year's. Well, let's just say that Happy New Year's. And we may build out some templates that you can select here, or you can build out your own templates, or you can just type in a text email here saying Happy New Year's, whatever your preference. So for this automation currently and for this video, I'm not going to actually build out the emails. So I'm just going to leave this blank for now and we'll come back and take care of that when we're ready to go. So that's the first one, New Year's. The next one is going to be Martin Luther King Day on January 15th. So I'm actually going to copy this action. I'm going to copy both of these here and paste it here. So now I can just edit this one. So this is going to be MLK Day and this is January 15th. So we're going to be waiting 14 days. So I'm just going to change this to 14 days. And now we're going to change the hours. I'm going to actually leave it at one hour so that we're going to send them at 9 a.m. So we'll say 14 days, one hour. And then for days, we're going to say 14. So again, this is going to be starting January 1st. We're going to wait 14 days after that, which will be January 15th. And then we're going to also wait one hour, which will be 9 a.m. And we'll just leave this checked here and then we'll save that as is. And then here we'll just change this to email to MLK day. And the same thing here is happy Martin Luther King Jr. Day. We'll save that. And that's it. So we'll just continue building this out for the rest of the year. And again, we have 11 holidays, so we'll just duplicate this. Now I could just clone these whole, all four of these here. So that would create the next four actions and speed it up a little bit. So now I have a bunch of these created already. So I'm just going to pause the video and build these out. And then when I'm finished, I'll come back and explain what I've done uh, just to go over everything. Okay, I've built all of these out. It's taken me about 15 minutes or so to enter all of them. And again, this is just building out the automation. So I'm not building out the email. So that's not included in the 15 minutes, but it'd be pretty easy for you to go through and build your emails, especially nowadays if you're using chat GPT or if you're just doing simple emails. Just I would recommend creating a folder in your templates for 2024 holidays and building out all your emails and then coming to your email here and selecting that template and updating your from information here and then it's amazing you've got all of the holidays set for the year and so you can just clone this automation for 2025 change the dates some holidays fall on different days of the year which is why I'm doing it this way in terms of waiting for days but yeah so this is super easy so what I would do then is at the end of this automation let's just scroll down here so we've got Juneteenth we've got 4th of July and just again, to give you a reminder of what we did here. So let's say Thanksgiving. You can see I shortened some of these to Turkey Day because the name can only be so many characters. So you may have to shorten that or change your formatting. Or maybe your date would be 11 slash 28 slash 24. However you want to handle that. You can see here Thanksgiving is November 28th. So after January 1st, we're going to wait 10 months. So we're going to wait until November. 
and then 27 days. So we're going to wait until November 28th and then one hour. So 9 a.m. You may want to send these before the holiday. You can adjust the times as you wish. So this is just a starting point for you. The other thing I would recommend doing is before I cover that, one other thing I'd like to add is make sure you double check the output with ChatGPT. So it told me Thanksgiving Day was 11 months and three days later. So you just want to make sure sometimes when you're doing calculations like that, towards the end of them, they start falling apart. So just make sure you double check those dates and you just don't assume everything ChatGPT gives you is correct. Google Gemini did the same thing. November, December dates were off. So just the holiday dates were correct, but the dates after January 1st were calculated incorrectly. So just make sure you don't take that as gospel. You just use it as a tool to help you get this stuff together quicker. And so something you may want to do here is you can duplicate this whole workflow for 2025, update the dates, and then here you can add a go to workflow, add to workflow. So let's just type in workflow. So here you can add a workflow and then you can select your 2025 automation. So once they finish this automation, it's automatically going to add them to the 2025 workflow. And so you may want to set that all up at one time for the next year or two so you don't have to worry about it or set yourself a reminder around November or so. Come in, create your automation for next year, and then come back here and add that step to add them to the workflow. You can't do it now without having a workflow created. So if I was to try to add the workflow now, and save that, it's going to give me an error. So until you have the workflow created, you can't do this step. So that's why I'm leaving that out. And then you may want to tag people. You may want to do other things. If you want to add different holidays or remove different holidays, you can do that as well. And then one other thing that's really important here is I recommend testing it. And this is going to show you how, why this is so valuable because as I'm recording this, it's June. So for June, we're going to skip all of these holidays and we're going to come into 4th of July. So we want to make sure that we're not getting emails coming in before that. So now we're going to test the workflow. Make sure you save it first. So I'm going to test this and I'm going to add myself to this. And the reason this is so important is this is going to show you if this works or not. And as I'm recording this, it's June. So I want to make sure I'm not getting added to all these emails here from January before June. So I should be coming in right before this 4th of July one. So let's just take a look at that and see. So you can see I was enrolled here and my current action is Juneteenth, which I have the date wrong here. Juneteenth is actually the 19th of June. So this is actually correct. So let me just come and update that really quick. Another reason why it's so important to check this. So I have the information here correct, but I have the date incorrect up here. So we're going to set that June 19th and that's too long here. So I'm just going to shorten this to June and see if that works. Still not right. So I'm going to probably change my date formatting. I just want this all to be consistent. So 06 19 2024 20, and then we'll just change this back to Juneteenth here. So we'll save that so it's consistent. So now you can see that my wait step is here. So if I look at the execution logs, I should have missed all of these. And one other change I made as I was doing this is I took the number of email out. Uh, the reason I did that is if I decide I want to add another holiday or add something in here, I don't want to have to go back and rename the number. So let's say this was email five and I wanted to add something between email six. That means I have to rename email six to email seven, email seven to email eight. I don't want to do that. So I just took the names out here so that going forward, it's going to be easier for me if I need to make changes. So going back to the execution logs, we can see here skipped all of these emails. And so if you look at the details here, it was skipped because the event was in the past. So that is exactly what we wanted. And so the execution history here will show all of these. And then now it shows that it's waiting. So we are waiting until June 21st, 2024, which is our Juneteenth. But the other thing that's really important is you can see my days are off now. So this is a good way to check. So I actually need to make it two days earlier because it should be on June 19th. So this is a really good way to troubleshoot and make sure your logic is right. In my case, it's not right. So let's see what I did here. I'm going to go back to Juneteenth and we've got 619. So I need to make it actually 18 days. So my logic is backwards. I was adding a day, but I should be subtracting a day. So I'm going to need to go back on every one of these and then just subtract it. Let's take a look here. 18 days and you can see this should be 18 days. So this was a user error. My chart does say 18 days. I entered it incorrectly, but this is really a great reminder that you should double check what you're entering in. 
uh, easy to make these mistakes. So now if I try this again, let's save that. And we're going to just do one more test before we go here. So I'm going to test again. And we'll do a different email address here to test. And now let's check the execution logs again. And so let's see what we've got here. Let's come back and check this again. Give it a minute before you do this. We should be at a wait step here. Okay, so here we are at the wait step. Now let's view the details. So the next execution is June 19th, 2024 at 9 a.m. And that is the date that we wanted to execute. So I recommend just checking all these. So if you check, for example, here, this was skipped because it was in the past. And so this is exactly what we want. We want somebody opts in today. They're going to come into this automation at the correct time and not start receiving emails from January 1st. So one last thing I'll show you is if you wanted to combine this with a different workflow, you could do that as well. For example, we've got this one year worth of emails sent out. So every 1st and 15th of the month, we're sending an email. So this is a really great nurturing sequence. So if you wanted to come in here and incorporate the holidays, you could do that as well. So we would replace this January 1st email with a New Year's email. And then maybe we're going to send another email on January 15th. And then that would be maybe Martin Luther King Day. And then the next holiday would be President's Day, which would be 219. So maybe I'm going to send out a regular newsletter on February 1st and then I want to change this February 15th email to President's Day so I'm going to change that to February 19th. So you could easily incorporate that into this automation which has a whole year's worth of emails built out and this is really just a great way to keep front of mind with your contact list sending value-based emails throughout the year. You can decide the frequency. This one is set up for sending out two emails a month. You may want to do one email a month or quarterly. That's really up to you. If you are a ClickHubs member, the good news is you don't have to build this out yourself. This as well as the holidays will be in your account. So you can just go in there and connect your newsletters and you're good to go. So we've already done this process for you. So hopefully you found that helpful. This also is a really great way to understand how event-based emails work. For example, if you're running a challenge that starts on a certain day and you want to send a reminders 24 hours before, one hour before five minutes before this is how you would do it you would send your event start date here which you could also use a custom value here so if you want to be able to change that one place to impact different areas you could do that and then you would just set your wait time to based on when your event starts all right guys and gals email is still very important for your marketing it's free it's something that you own you don't have to pay for advertising you don't have to get other people to promote you this is your email list, people that have given you permission to send them emails. And so it only makes sense to create these type of automations so you can continue to stay in front of your people, add value to them, or even just wishing them a happy holiday so that you can bring goodwill to people and you're always going to be present in their mind. So I really recommend that you take some time to set these type of automations up for your own business. And that way it's just done autopilot. You don't have to remember to set up emails. You don't have to miss emails because you got busy and you didn't have time to do it. Just take a couple of hours and do it at the end of each year for the following year and you will have a ton of content ready to go. Hopefully you enjoyed this and I will look forward to seeing you in the next video. Before you go, make sure to subscribe to our channel, like this video and leave your question or comment below and we'll get back to you. Thank you all and I'll see you in the next one.